All right, I've got another video for you today. Today I want to talk about what you do and or do not do in tribulation if you miss the rapture. Now, if, you, if you're saved, you're washed in the blood of Jesus, have faith in the blood of the atonement Jesus split on the cross, you have faith that Jesus died in your place for your sins, then you are saved. If you're trusting only what Jesus did for you, then you are saved, then, then amen. But those of you that end up, you know, if, if you're watching this and the rapture would happen, this is a perfect video to give you instruction on what to do and what not to do in tribulation because it is go it would be life or death, literally, because it will ultimately be a one world government. It will be a dictatorship of the Antichrist, ultimately become Satan at three and a half days, uh, three and a half years afterward. We see here what we have to do, and it's going to be the biggest thing here is the mark of the beast as we know. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 13 and we'll look at chapter 16 and 17. Uh, chapter 13, uh, verse 16 and 17. It says, that He, he who, he the Antichrist, causeth all small and great, rich and, uh, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads. And no man may buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, you accept the mark of the beast, we find out something else. Now, this is something you cannot do. If we go over here to Revelation chapter 14, we go to 14, and we start here in verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark uh, on his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine press of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. In verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And uh, it says, and, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast, uh, worship the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. It's interesting because if you receive them, if you worship the beast in the, or its image, if you take the mark of the beast in your right hand or your forehead, then you are damned. If you, some people teach that, you know, Jesus means when Jesus said, you know, if your right hand offend, he cut it off. A lot of people believe this is what it means. Like if you see Jesus and he comes back in Armageddon, it's like, oh, there's Jesus and he cut your right hand off. I do not believe that's what Jesus was talking about. I believe that Jesus was talking about in the millennial kingdom because Jesus was teaching the kingdom gospel which is teaching the Jews how to live in the millennial kingdom when he returns for the thousand year reign but once you accept the mark of the beast there is no return do not accept the mark of the beast in your right hand or forehead for any reason whatsoever because that is damned you're done you can't be saved at that point point. and we see here because Jesus is talking about this let's go clear over to Matthew chapter 24 there's so much information in Matthew 24 about future events as well. And if we look in Matthew 24, 13, we see Jesus speaking. He says, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, Jesus is talking about in a future tense. Because when you see the beginning of Matthew 24, which I mentioned many times here, it says, and, and uh, people are asking how, these, how the end will come and things. He's talking about how things will happen and the end times will come. And we read in verse 14, and he says, And the kingdom of gospel shall be preached into all the world for the witness of all nations, and then, and then shall the end come. We're not under the kingdom of gospel today. That's Jesus telling the Jews how to live in the millennial kingdom. And, and the, the way to get saved in the time of Jesus was to believe that he was the Messiah, is to trust and believe he's the Messiah of the Old Testament. That's how they got saved. Then they dipped him in water. And they were baptized, and then when he come out of the water, they had the Holy Spirit. We don't have that today. We're baptized with the Holy Spirit, not needing water, of, of water baptism at all today. But we're seeing the kingdom gospel. We're not under the kingdom gospel today. We're under the gospel of what Paul taught us, because Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles, Romans eleven thirteen. So we do know for a fact, in tribulation, the gospel will change. In tribulation, trusting in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4, through 4, trusting the blood atonement Jesus spilled for us on the cross, trusting that Jesus died and rose again the third day. In tribulation, that will not work. That is only for today. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, that gospel of today is good until the rapture. Now, after the rapture, you're going to have to find a different way. I'm going to show you today what you need to do and what you should not be doing in tribulation so you can be, quote-unquote, saved, basically. It's a different way to be saved then. It's like you have to do all these things. 
But we see you don't take the mark of the beast, you don't worship the beast, or worship the beast image. You don't do that. If you do one of those three, three things, or all those three things, you will be damned. And that's what the Bible teaches. So, we have to understand here, let's look at Revelation chapter 20, and we see what happens if you refuse the mark. And it says, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, and it says, I saw thrones, and them that sat upon him, judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, uh, in which I had not worshipped the beast, neither its image, neither had received the mark in their, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and lived, lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's a thousand years of millennial reign. That's the kingdom that the, the Jews are waiting for. Now it says here, if you refuse to take the mark, you refuse to worship the beast or its image, you refuse those, any of those three things or all three things, you will be beheaded. So we have to see, it's going to be hard in those times to not take the mark because you're like, I'm going to be killed if I don't. So you have to be very careful what you're going to do. And people say to me, well, I can just hide out for seven years, no problem. Well, we have a little bit of a problem here. Let's look at Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8 verse 7 says, and the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all the grass was burnt up. So we see a third part of the earth is burnt up. Now, it sounds to me like if someone dies of just natural causes or killed in tribulation, they go straight to hell. Because in order in tribulation for someone to go to the Lord, you have to be beheaded for the testimony in the faith of Jesus Christ. And we see that. Now let's look at that why I mentioned it. Let's look at it now. Let's go back over to Revelation chapter 14. And we're going to see this here because here's what some things the Lord's telling you to do. I'm telling you things you shouldn't do in tribulation. Now here's things you need to do. It says, well, first things we need to see here is the gospel has changed. And it says in uh, Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and in the fountains. It's talking, now you scoot down to verse 12 in uh, chapter 14 of Revelation. It says, Here's the patience of the saints. Now wait a second. Well, we're saints. We're saved. But these are different saints. These are people that got saved in tribulation. So these are new saints. It says, Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ. Okay, who's keeping the commandments? Jews. So these are, you know, Jews getting that had gotten saved and realized that Jesus was their Messiah in tribulation. Now, there could be some Gentiles in our shore. But for Gentiles, I think it's going to be a little tough. We'll get into that in just a second. Again, it says in Revelation 14, 12, here's the patience of the saints. Again, these saints got saved after tribulation began. And of course, after the rapture. And it says, here's... The, uh, here they are that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we have to see that there's different saints. These people are going to be the ones that are willingly going to be beheaded because they're going to have the testimony of Jesus and they're going to love, love, love not their lives to the end. And it says here in uh, Revelation 12, 17, And the dragon, dragon Satan, which wroth with the woman, the woman is Israel, and went to make war with the re uh, remnant of her seed. That's Jews, it's Israel, which keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now at this point, they believe they found out that Jesus was their Messiah. Like, wait, it was Jesus the whole time. And they keep the commandments. You talk to a practicing Jew today, they're like, we're keeping the commandments. They're just waiting for the Messiah to show up. Well, for the first three and a half years, they're going to think the Antichrist is the Messiah. Like a lot of people, even non-Jews, will believe and they have a false gospel. And they're going to see signs and lying wonders, it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So we see... Now let's go ahead and run over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 while we're at it because I want to get this, I want to make it very clear of all these crazy things going to happen in tribulation. In uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we read this. And this is in the time, now Paul starts uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in the context of the rapture. And he's talking about, the, you know, there won't be a rapture, there's a falling away first. I think the falling away has happened a long time ago. And it says, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. Now he's talking about the, the Antichrist. Or, or it says, or that worship so that he is God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, it's telling us that the temple of God, of course, as I mentioned in the video yesterday and the day before, that the, the, third, this is, the temple of God is the third temple in this, in this context. Because we see that the third temple will soon be rebuilt. I don't know when, 
but soon it will be rebuilt. I don't know if it's before or after the rapture. I'm not really sure. But it says that in the temple of God. So the Antichrist, the devil, will actually walk in to the temple halfway through tribulation, three and a half years, and he will throw the Jews out from their, their time of uh, sacrifice. And he'll come in and he'll sit upon the mercy seat and claim to be God himself, which of course he's not. So we see how that is in context of the end times now. But we read down to verse uh, 11 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 11 says, For this cause God shall uh, send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, send, uh, now for this cause, what cause? It's, and it says in 10, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness unto them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be believed. The love of the truth is the gospel. And then it says after that again, it says, For this cause God shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, I'm thinking the strong delusion, God the Father is sending strong delusion that people will be, believe a lie. What's the lie? It sounds like the lie is the pe people going to believe it. the devil is the Messiah, God, which he is not. And it, God's going to allow them to believe that, even send strong delusion so that they will in tribulation. So we see all these things, and I, I think it's pointed, in my opinion, that strong delusion is pointed more to Gentiles than to Jews, because God goes back to dealing with the Jews. I mean, he goes back to dealing with them, and he helps them. He says that he they, um, that God gives the, the Jews, the woman, wings of an eagle, so she can fly into the wilderness. God is protecting uh, the Jews in that time. And it says in uh, Revelation 12, 14, And the woman, of course Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a times, times, and a half a times from the face of the serpent. We see, and we also read again the same context in Matthew 24. When Jesus is speaking about the situation, he says, flee to the mountains. And they fled to the wilderness, the wilderness, the mountains, same thing. And we see how that all works, because it all lines up together. Matthew 24, and he says, it says in 24, 16, it says, let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. And that lines up with Revelation chapter 12, which I mentioned. So it comes down to it to this. You need, if you go through tribulation, you miss the rapture. You cannot take the mark of the beast on your right hand or forehead. You cannot worship the beast, and you cannot worship the beast images. The image, if you do any of these things, or all three, or two, or two of the three, whatever, you will be damned, and you cannot be saved. You cannot just cut off your right hand. What, what happens if you get to get into your forehead? You got to cut off your head. I mean, I mean, some people preach that, and not, not against, not against that or anything. But I believe Jesus meant that in a, in a different dispensation of when He said, "If your right hand offended, cut it off." I think He meant that in the millennial kingdom. Because there will be human people, you know, human as far as in human bodies in the millennial kingdom. And uh, I think that, you know, people will still be people and they could sin. And I think if they sin, they'd rather cut their hand off than sin. Because if they sin in the millennial kingdom, and I think the Lord will give them a chance to repent, it seems. But after that, they keep sinning, they'll just throw them right into hell, literally. Because hell will be ripped right open in the millennial kingdom. So we have to see. Let's see, I want to make sure I got all my verses right. But it's really simple. Get saved now. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It's what Jesus did. Jesus spilled his blood to, to pay for your sins and purchase you on the cross. And when Jesus did that, all our sins were forgiven. But they're not forgiven unless we believe it, unless we have faith. Because the because the gospel is more of a brother, and I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach and, which I preached unto you, which you also received, and where you stand. That stand faith. By which also you were saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died, how did Christ die? He spilled his blood uh, for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus died on the cross, and three days later, on a Sunday, he rose again. He's God. You can't stop him. You can't kill God. And he can't, you can't kill God and not come back in three days. But that's what it was. It's the faith in the blood atonement. If you don't have faith in the blood atonement, there's not been a blood sacrifice made for your sins then. If there's, if there's no shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Hebrews 9.22. So we have to understand it's through what Jesus did. We don't, whatever we did, it doesn't matter what we did. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot add to salvation. It's only what Jesus did. And if you sin once in your life, it's enough to go to hell and pay for eternity for your sins. So get saved now before tribulation. Those of you that go through tribulation, good luck. Because you don't have to go. The pre-tribulation rapture is fact. We have to understand how that goes. You cannot take the mark of the beast. If you take the mark of the beast, you're, you're damned. You cannot worship the beast or its image either, or you're damned. And we have to understand that you have to, if you're Jews, 
you have to accept Jesus Christ. He is your Savior and He is your Messiah all this time. So we have to see because a lot of people are going to be, God the Father will send strong delusion that people will believe a lie in tribulation. And I think that might be more to Gentiles because God goes back to favoring Jews in tribulation. But that's it. That's it. We have to be careful. We have to understand that it's all about what Jesus did for our salvation. We have to understand there's going to be a lot of works in tribulation. Jesus spilled his blood for you. In tribulation, you have to spill your blood for him. Taking your head off, your tribulation. The best thing you want to do is your tribulation, find the first guillotine or guillotine, whatever you can find, and say, I trust in Jesus. I trust in Jesus. Take my head off. Seriously. It's going to be a time. Daniel spoke of it, saying the tribulation will be the worst time the world will have ever seen, ever. This will be a time you don't want to be in. And this world's coming that way. It's really going that direction. You know, you can't buy or sell without taking the mark of the beast, it says. You know, so we have to understand that. And I've heard a doctor come out like two years ago saying, if they don't take a certain vaccine, then they shouldn't be able to buy or sell without it. And she quoted scripture, probably didn't even know it. This world's got that mindset of tribulation. So, good luck to you. And if you get saved now, then amen. You don't have to worry about this. But if you're not saved, prepare. Because there's going to be a lot of things you've got to do and a lot of things you can't do. Because once you go to hell, there's no way out. The only time you'll come out is at the great way of judgment and the Lord will throw you to the lake of fire for eternity. That's what the Bible teaches. Good luck.